So, today we'll be going over a weapon I've gone from hating to loving. It's the standard of power for pistols in most games, it's a fan favorite for most, it makes a sound that no one can forget, it's the Deagle of Warframe. It's the Lex Prime. So, when it comes to the Lex, I was never a big fan of it due to how I started using it. It was clunky and always felt a little too slow, but now that I've learned to enjoy how it acts, I've grown to like it a lot more. So, let's begin today's video off with a couple of free shots. So, when it comes to the Lex, oops, I'm completely missing. When it comes to the Lex, it is, it's got quite good stats, to be honest. They're quite nice, they're fair to use, it's nice. To be, to be exact, it has a 25% crit chance, a 25% status chance, with a 2.0 multiplier. Meaning you can technically build for both status and crit with this weapon. But there's a specified way most people build it. They either build it for crit or nothing at all, it seems. But now with the Lex Incarnon, that can change. When I pop the Incarnon, once you see the meter is filled up after hitting headshots, it looks quite interesting. With its change, it now has a crit chance of 35%. The status is now 44%, and the crit multiplier is now 3.0. Now, the gun isn't just a powerhouse, it obviously has its downsides, that being it has a very low fire rate, a high kick in both forms, but it also has a really slow reload of it being almost 3 seconds. So, once you pop the Incarnon, once you fire it, you can see that I applied Radiation, Impact, and I'm shooting what looks like an Arca, uh, an Arca Plasma shot. As when transformed, as you see, it gained Radiation, it also gained Punch Through as we've hit the guy in the back. And it just guarantees an impact proc. It's very useful, but there's a cool thing about that impact proc, as you're saying I'm almost killing this guy. It's guaranteed. Well, there's a certain mod that really enjoys impact procs, but we'll get to that when we go over the builds. Now, let's go ahead and get into the Incarnate Evolutions. Now, let's get into the Incarnate Evolutions. With Evolution 1, obviously, we get the ability to unlock the Incarnon, so we will skip that and go straight on to Evolution 2. With Evolution 2, we are given two options. We are given Hoplite Virtue and Trusty Sidearm. Now, both of these are alright, but one of them beats the other quite a lot. But let's cover them. Hoplite Virtue increases your damage by 20, and on Shield Break, gives you a damage of plus 80 for 8 seconds. And then Trusty Sidearm increases your damage also by 20 but will give you plus 6% ammo efficiency when you have a channeled ability active. Now, this only applies in the non incarnal state. At least based off what I've seen from testing. I may be wrong, after all, Warframe is very specific what they consider channeled ability. But for the test for today, we'll be going with Hoplite Virtue, because I think it is just the better of the two. Next up is Evolution 3, where we are given our next three options, where we have Lex Tali uh, Talianus, Extended Volley, and Ready Retaliation. Now, they're all right. They're all quite nice options, but let's cover them. Lex Talionis gives minus 20% weapon recoil and plus 20% accuracy for 4 seconds. This stacks up 4 times when you get a headshot. Next up is Extended Volley, where you are given, obviously, plus 10 bullets, only to the non-incarnon. And then finally, you're given Ready Retaliation. All reload from empty, you're given a plus 100% reload speed. Now, when it comes to these, you get two options, basically. Lex Talionis, which is quite nice, or Extended Volley for the main thing. I think for today, instead of using Extended Volley, because I don't think I'll need all the bullets, I'm going to go with the first option. Finally, Evolution 4, we got our last set of three options, where we are given Executioner's Dawn, Elemental Balance, and Critical Parallel. Now, two of these are a lot better than the other, but let's cover them. We are given Executioner's Dawn, which gives us on Equip, plus 100% headshot damage for 4 seconds. Elemental Balance, which gives us increased damage chance by 30%. And then finally, Critical Parallel, which increases our crit chance by 19%, and our crit damage multiplier by 0.4 times. Now, the reason I said two of these are quite good options, Critical Parallel is where you would go for the um, crit build, where you would try to be more specific with trying to hit high crits, high red numbers, etc. Uh, elemental balance is where you would get the status from. Obviously, the weapon turns a lot more into the status type when you swap it to Incarnon, so elemental balance and critical parallel will be quite useful. I personally do not like a, uh, Executioner's Dawn, purely because 
It's just 100% headshot damage for 4 seconds. I can get that from just using one of the other two. I can get more damage from it. But now that we've covered the evolutions, let's go over the builds. Now, let's go ahead and get into the builds. When it comes to my builds, instead of being like most YouTubers who will make a Lex Prime video and then a Lex Prime and Karnon video, or etc., insert weapon here, I'm just going to keep the builds in one. There's going to be an Incarnon video with the normal build. The early build is for people who can acquire the Lex, but cannot acquire the Incarnon adapter. So obviously, if you are more experienced, give me a little bit of time to go over this one. So when it comes to the early-ish build, we have steady hands, but remember, this Exilus is not required. It just makes the gun feel a little bit better to use. You have Barrel Diffusion, Sure Shot, Target Cracker, Pistol Gambit, Hemorrhage, Lethal Torrent, Pistol Pestilence, and Convulsion. Now, something I will say, you can replace um, Target Cracker for Hornet Strike if you really want. You don't need to, because obviously most people will not have Secondary Merciless if you're using this as an early game build, so obviously replace the mods as you see fit. Now, Hemorrhage. The reason uh, the Incarnon is quite nice, if you do have it, but say don't have all these Galvanized mods up today, if you somehow have the Incarnon, Hemorrhage is quite useful, purely because since you have a guaranteed impact proc, Hemorrhage will have a higher chance of always going off, especially since your fire rate is less than 2. 0.5. Now, remember, if you do not have the Incarnon, you would not use Hemorrhage, you would instead use Hornet Strike, so you could keep Target Cracker. But, let us go ahead and give the weapon a test. So, I have a set of Orican, uh, basically a Orican Patrol, and let's see how it goes. Well, that's quite nice. Okay, well then. It hits quite hard, and there was an impact proc. How about a slightly higher enemy? Okay, two shots. Uh, ferrite armor, yeah, ferrite armor, I believe, is what you have. It does quite well. And then we have alloy armor, where if I had more bullets, he'd already be dead. Now, let's pop the Incarn on. Would you look at that? We hit four impacts, three slashes, and then they fall over. Same thing here, three impacts, four slashes, he killed over. And that just repeats. And it's quite powerful. Now you will see I'm using Corrosive. I think Corrosive does better on the weapon, but obviously if you don't believe that, you can go with Viral for Slash. But before we swap to the next build, let us see how it does in Steel Path. So obviously, you go for the weakest enemies in a room to get rid of the fodder, and then you sometimes scale up or go straight to the next enemy. We have our Incarnon, proc the Incarnon, and proc to slash and he dies but this is a arcaplasma type shot with punch through so you're not going to go and shoot just one enemy shoot a line of them well there goes a lot of them shoot another line of them well, there goes more of them and as you see this has a pretty big aoe shoot in between i'll hit all of them and obviously it hits quite hard so that's the late uh early -ish build so, you can use this for the normal Lex, for places you need, or if you don't have all of the Galvanized mods or Prime mods, for places you need for a later game build. Now, let's actually get on to the late game build. So, let's move on to the later game build. Obviously, we still have a type of Diffusion, but we're going with Galvanized Diffusion, Galvanized Shot for more status as you get kills, Prime Target Cracker for more crit chance, Prime Pistol Gamer for even more crit multiplier, Hemorrhage because of the innate impact proc we get, Lethal Torrent, Pistol Pestilence, and Jolt. Obviously, once again, you can replace that for Viral if you see fit. Just going to go over the mods like that. Obviously, not all of them are maxed. I am broke. I've been having to buy Forma and Potatoes recently, so... The boys having some problems. So, let's see how this works in non-steel path first. Well, obviously, it's going to do about the same as the early game build does, but a slight bit better because of the uh, on-kill effect mods. So, with everything fully stacked up, if I had more bullets, you'd be dead. We're doing quite well. So, what about the Incarnon? Well, it's going to do about what you expect. They're going to die. It's quite strong. It's really hard. But what about Steel Path? Well, obviously, Oregon Battle Group, because you don't just fight heavy gunners in a room. Unbrock the Incarnon, one shot, one shot, one shot, one shot, one shot, 
One shot. Couple shots if I can actually aim better. And he's dead too. But obviously, once you get your Incarnon, you're not going to just keep pelt uh, pelting them with peas. You're going to pop the Incarnon. Well, Slash is applied, Radiation is applied, Corrosive's on. So their armor's dead. And they're going to die. He didn't get the full proc, so he didn't die. But you don't just shoot once down a hallway. You shoot a couple times down the hallway. As you see, it works even well in Steel Path. But obviously, there's still more to show. So next up, I'm going to show, obviously, Mirage and Hydroid. What happens when you mix abilities with the Lex Prime? So as I had stated, we're now going to mix a Warframe with the weapon, because obviously Warframe is a synergy based game as my clan proceeds to shout at me because I do my builds before a frame. So we're going to use Mirage and Hydroid for today, obviously because we have a corrosive build, I want to use my Hydroid. So here's the Mirage build we'll be using for today, negative range, negative efficiency, but high strength and duration. So we're going to treat it the same way you would any Mirage build. Once you get enough energy, I forgot to respawn the enemies, my apologies. On steel path. Once you get enough energy, you're going to pop Hall of Mirrors on. You're going to pop Eclipse by holding it, and you're going to start shooting. Well, obviously, it's still going to one-shot the low-tier trash. Meet it mid-grade, high-tier, and then it kills the alloy armor even better. Fair right. One of those two. But pop the Incarnon, and you're going to see why Mirage is really strong. Well, I'm going to aim down this way. And, well, uh... Everything's kind of kind of dead or that. But hey, she's one hell of a gunslinger. What if I did Hydroid? Well, the build's corrosive. It should do quite well. He also has Archon Shards, so he's even more optimal. Obviously, you don't need these. And hell, while we're at it, why not? Let's use Nourish. Oh, hey, look at that. Let's go ahead and tell him. Why not? Making the Lex video, buddy. But yeah, next up is the Hydroid. Once again, you'd have energy, so let me grab some of that. But obviously, you're going to pop your abilities, so why not? Let's pop Nourish. Let's do Plunder. Well, we got some good amount of armor. How do the enemies fare? Well, they're still going to just... Still going to kind of just... uh. And they just crumble. Alloy armor doesn't stand a chance. Ferrite armor doesn't stand a chance. It's one of the two. I keep mixing them up. But anyway, what's the Incarnon like? I think it was that Hall of Enemies. Well, there you go. It hits unbelievably hard. Now, I'm going to take us to Steel Path. But before we go to Steel Path, I will show the rest of the build. We're going to bring Mirage set of Hydroid for once because I feel like being different. Where's my Mirage? There she is. We're going to bring my Burst on Prime for in case something I can't kill spawns and it gets obnoxious, like um, Sanguine Enemies. They they get annoying. Uh, and then we're going to bring my Hate. We're going to bring Biscuit along, even though she doesn't do anything other than give me Fetch. But I will see y'all in Steel Path. So here we are in the Path of Steel, where we are going to see how everything just handles being slot, slopped, slaughtered by the Lex Prime. Did I accidentally take off the build? Oh no. I think I may have taken off the build. Nope, I did not. That's just the difference between getting a headshot and uh, hitting them in the back. But obviously, you're not just going to sit around and not have your abilities on. Turn your abilities. Go crazy with it, right? But aim better than I do, because wow, that's bad. Where'd you go? There you are. As you see, it does quite well in its base form. But what about if I swap it over to the Incarnon? Wow. Okay. 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 As you can see, there we go. And you see, it does quite well. Supreme, even. Easy like that. Just slaughters. See, I was trying to get the, um, what is it? the on shield break thing to work, but I'm starting to think it's actually bugged and may not be working or it's always working. I 
really can't tell. Because whenever you break shield, I might get a buff, but it kind of feels like my damage increases, so maybe it's just not visual. But, as you can tell, everything uh, kind of just dies. As I am also now kind of confused where the enemies are. Oh, here they are. Oh, here we go. We can now see what it's like on Xmas, and after the Xmas, I will try to get a Acolyte to spawn. Where is he? There he is. It's a Blitz Xmas. Well, there he goes. That was a Blitz Xmas unit. And hell, that's without Eclipse. That's just with Hollow Mirrors on, which is... Ow. It just makes me have a couple more girls shoot it at them, I guess. Yeah, as you see, I'm purposely trying not to kill them to get the shield break to proc, and I don't see that buff appearing on the uh, top right of my screen. Yeah, I see nothing. Maybe it's a visual bug, maybe it's always active. I don't know. Obviously, if you want to look it up, check the wiki. But I'll be back with y'all when I can get an Acolyte to spawn. All right. Uh, we are back now, and I got a Acolyte to spawn. Ooh, we got Mania. Hopper buffs, obviously. Now, how does she handle being shot normally? Where is she going? Okay, they handle it quite well. But what about the Incarnon? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Granted, yes, that is with Eclipse, but I believe even that could be done without it. So, there you go. I think the gun is quite powerful, but obviously, uh, I will give my final thoughts on the weapon once I am back in the um, Orbiter. So, I'll see y'all back when I get back to my ship. So, here we are, back in the ship after completing our still path. Now, my final thoughts on the Lex Prime Incarnon and the Lex Prime in general. I find the gun to be quite fun. It is a little bit to get used to, obviously, at the start, as it is a gun that kicks really, really hard, because its recoil kicks really hard. It's a deagle, after all. It's meant to feel like you're being kicked by a, a mule. And overall, its stats are not bad. If we just go ahead and pop out of solo and go to public, if I type in Lex Prime, we can see the base stats without the Incarnon entirely. So, as you see, the fire rate's 2, magazine is 8. Uh, I swore recoil used to be listed here, but it's a very high recoil, and its stats are not bad for it being a really easy-to-get pistol. It only requires Master 8, and you can also just go and get the normal Lex if you really like it. The Lex is a Master 3, and it's just slightly worse than the Incar and the Cardon, the Prime, and you can just straight up purchase it. That is why it is a very fun and easy to get pistol. Am I going to re recommend it to everyone? No, not everybody likes single fire weapons. Some people like multi targeted weapons. Examples like, if you don't like single targets, you may like the Nucor, the Occucor, the Cyclone, I believe is his name, the Atomos, maybe even. I don't know if that's single target or multi target. I, I haven't used it in forever. But everyone has their niche, everyone likes what they like, it's all up to what you prefer. So, obviously, play with the game as you want. I'm not going to tell you what, how to play, what way to play, what builds to use. I give you recommendations, and I hope you have fun using them. So, before we end for today with everyone, here's the late game build, and here's the early-ish game build, and do as this says, because guess what? You're loved. <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoy using these builds. I do hope to see you guys again. Make sure you hit, hit that sub button so you always get notified by hitting that bell as well. That way you get notified of whenever I post another video and get a new video out to y'all. As well, before we go, you can pick a gun on this list, comment it down, and I'll do a review on it. Obviously some of these I like, some of these I don't. I still need to do the Latron. I still need to do uh, Dread. And I still need to do the Strun. All these are some of the weapons I really enjoy using. But I'll let y'all decide in the comments. Pick what you like. Other than that, hit that sub button and hit that bell for post notifications. Peace out, Markers. Sayonara.